I love it when brands bring out innovative products to help us play better golf. And TaylorMade have brought out this line of trust putters. And from here, it looks pretty normal. But from here, it looks totally different. Now let me read a little bit of the spiel from TaylorMade about the trust. The trust, we develop trust for, de for players who desire the stability and forgiveness of a mallet putter, but prefer a more traditional look at a dress, okay? And trust, it looks like nothing else because it puts like nothing else. Well, that's not really the truth, is it, TaylorMade? Because a very simple Google search, I found two putters that have suspiciously similar shapes to this. One from Titlist and one from a company called Ashton. So, we go back to that line that TaylorMade said. Trust, it looks like nothing else. Well, we have seen putters like this before. So even though this technology isn't revolutionary and maybe TaylorMade have copied it, let's give it a try and see if it actually works. And it's all about this, this truss framework. And that's where obviously the name of the putter comes in. It's a way of connecting the shaft to the head to produce more stability. Now I'm gonna read what truss actually means. A framework typically consisting of rafters, posts and struts supporting a roof, bridge or other structure. So it's all about support and it's all about how it supports the putter face. So off-centered hits, it's supposed to twist less. Price-wise, these are coming in at £269, so they're certainly not cheap. And there's four in the lineup. There's this one, which is TB2, which is a traditional blade-like, but center shafted with the truss in the middle. And then there's the TB1, which is again, more of a similar blade shape, but the truss now has moved more towards the heel. And then there's two mallet designs. There's TM1, TM2, and again, the actual neck is different. This TM2 has more of a center shafted option, where TS1 is more traditional placement of the shaft going into the head. I'm gonna give this one a go, TM2, because it's the one that kind of intrigues me the most. It is unusual looking. I think the big thing is, sitting it behind the ball, their aim is to have it a traditional shape, but with more stability. Oh, I've got to be honest, I wouldn't say that's a traditional shape. This section here of the putter is really sticking out. It's very obvious you can see it. They've done the best to hide it, but it does make it a little bit ugly, the putter. Right, let's see how it performs. Let's see how stable it is. Got a little put up the hill comes with a thinner grip this time. The putter grips are going back thinner again, which is a shame. Mm, that's an unusual feel. Feel-wise, just off the very first putt, it felt like the face had no rotation to it whatsoever. It felt like the face stayed square, which is not a bad thing, but when maybe you're used to having the putter open and close, it may be a bad thing. That felt like it stayed very square back and through. But if it does that, oh, you're joking, it didn't go in. Unusual feel off the bat. It definitely keeps the face more stable. Hmm, not sure just yet. So that is testing of the truss putters done. Got some mixed thoughts about these putters. First off, I'm gonna talk about what my favorite shape is. It's this one, TM1. However, it's the one that has the least intrusive truss part of the putter. 
So how much actual benefit it's having on the performance is very, very minimal. It's the one that you can see less of it because I'm gonna be honest, this one with the biggest truss in the middle, this is TB2. Even though it's still a blade and their idea is to try and get a forgiving putter that's still a blade shape, this is an ugly looking putter. Oh my goodness, behind the ball, this thing sticks out and just, it is horrible. It's, it's the most horrible looking blade I've ever seen. No way can I imagine any player really using that. And the other thing is, I don't know, let me grab a ball, let me show you. It's, it's, it really is an ugly thing. However, I think it would give the most potential performance benefit because I would imagine that truss would have the most actual impact. When you put the ball on the ground, literally the truss part completely covers the ball. It looks when you're looking down on the putter that there is zero degrees of loft because of this big thing sticking out and it feels awful. It does, it feels like you're, you're drilling the ball into the ground downwards. I don't like that at all, that's an ugly shape. As I mentioned, this one's from my favorite shape, but it has got the least amount of truss. Now this time when you actually put the ball in the middle, it sits almost more like a conventional putter and ball combination. <laughs> But how much impact, honestly, that is having is minimal. I tried to hit some off the centre and can't really tell any, any stability at all on this putter. For me, as I mentioned at the start of this video, this isn't new technology, it's been around before. Why did it fail in the past? Possibly for the same reasons it might fail this time. It's not the best looking thing in the world. Maybe it's not giving the most stability. And if it's not worked before, why did, why did Tony think it's going to potentially work this time? I'll be interested to see. I would be amazed if tour players use it. I'd be, uh, hold, don't hold me to that. But truss, it's not original. It's been copied before. And for me, I'll be honest, unless you went for this style, which actually looks like a decent shape, I don't think truss is going to do anything whatsoever. Guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.